Why It Works, Light and Dark by Anna Claiborne. Here we have the table of contents. It tells you where each of these um, little mini chapters and subheadings are located. I also see where the glossary is that will have some kind of def dictionary definitions particular to this, word, this text. Um, and then also it has the index. If you're looking for a particular subject, um, you'll be able to find that in the back of the index as well. So here's our glossary over here and then the index um, as well. So pretty cool. Um, there also will be some bold words in here as well as some headings and subheadings. So we'll be discussing that as we read along. Where is light from? Most of our light comes from the sun. The sun is a big ball of fire. The burning fire gives us daylight. Um, this picture has a caption. It says electric lights are another light source. They make light using electricity. So here are some trees and they're covered with different lights. It says warning, never look directly at the sun. It could damage your eyesight. And I have heard that if you look at the, at the sun, you could damage your eyes. Um, it could make you have like little black spots in it, um, like in your vision. And so never, ever, ever stare at the sun. Um, here's a flashlight. This has a diagram and it's pointing over to the flashlight. Um, a flashlight is another source of light that contains a small light bulb powered by a battery. Um, I have even seen some, some flashlights that are, that are powered by um, shaking them and having that different kind of energy. There's lots of different kinds of, um, of, of ways to power things. This one's powered by a battery. Some animals, such as the squid, glow with light. They have chemicals in their body that give out light. Um, so there's, this is all about where light is from. So there's lots of different light. We've got the electric light. Um, we've got the sun. This one is with the electricity of the battery. This one has chemicals. And this says, when you switch on a flashlight, a beam of light shines in the direction you point it. Here's the beam of light. There's the flashlight. I like the diagram with the arrows. Um, this next subheading, light to see by. This is in bold, so that means it's pretty important. You can tell when it is light and when it is dark. How does light work and how does it help us to see? If you cover your eyes with your hands, you cannot see anything, not even your hands. Why not? You can only see when light goes into your eyes. Your hands stop the light from reaching them. And when your eyes are open and uncovered, they let light in. It sends a message to your brain so that you understand what you are looking at. Um, here's a couple of diagrams. We'll start with the one at the top. I can see that it says light bulb with rays of light and it's pointing at um, the picture of the of the young boy. This is going over exactly what is going on in the words over here. So this is just a diagram of that. So your hands stop light reaching your eyes and when you move your hands the light reaches to your eye. Here's a picture of an actual eye. I really like that um, and it's pointing to the pupil. Um, notice that the word pupil is bold. That does mean that it is a word, if you flip over to the back, that you can find in the glossary. So here we have the word pupil. It says the black hole in your eye that lets light in. And if I go over here, it says pupil. Light goes into your eyes through holes called pupils. That's pretty cool. How far can you see? Guess how far your eyes can see? One mile, 10 miles, 100,000 miles. It's farther than that. At night, you can see the moon, and it is about 248,550 miles away from Earth. From the top of a hill or a car, I'm sorry, or a tall building, you can see a very long way if nothing blocks your view. So really cool thing you can go and tell somebody um, is that you know how to see really far away. You can see more than 248,000 miles away. So that's, remember how far away that the moon is. So if you want to tell some, someone something cool, maybe you have a hidden talent, that's how far you can see. You could really impress someone with that. At night, you can see the stars, and they're millions of miles away. Like the sun, each star is a ball of fire. You can see the stars because light from them travels to your eyes. 
Light moves very fast. It travels about 186,400 miles every second. Um, light moves much faster than speedy space rockets. So how far can you see? Many, 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 many miles away. Let's talk about shadows. That's what this next heading is about. Shine a flashlight at your wall, then put your hands in a way and see what happens. So here we have a flashlight that was shown and then this person is using the shadows. Um, your hands block the light from the flashlight and make a shadow on the wall. Light casts shadows because it travels in straight lines. It cannot curve around things. The places light cannot reach remain dark. And that's what the shadows are. It's a fact. As the rays of light shine out of a flashlight, they spread out in straight lines. This makes the spider's shadow on the wall bigger than the spider itself. That's pretty cool. Um, a shadow forms when an object stops light from getting through. So on this side, we've got this beam of light and it is going onto this spider. And just like what it said over here, this spider looks much larger. So the flashlight and the shadow. Bouncing light. Light travels in straight lines. To go round a corner, it must bounce off something. Light bounces off things all the time. For example, it can bounce or reflect off a mirror. Um, I've also seen light on the back of somebody's car as I'm driving behind them, and it might even shine like a bright spot in my eyes as I'm driving. Um, I'm sure you've probably seen it as well. So try this. So here's an experiment that you could try. Um, so that you can see around a corner, you need a small plastic mirror. So stand outside a room next to the doorway so that you cannot see inside. Hold up the mirror so that it faces the room. Turn it slowly towards you and you will be able to see things inside the room reflected in the mirror. That's pretty cool. You could also use it to spy on somebody, but just don't say that I told you to do it. So it's a fact. Light from the sun or another source bounces off objects in the room, then hits the mirror. The light bounces off the mirror into your eyes, and this lets you see everything around, around you, including the corners. So the light is coming to your eyes, and it's um, bouncing from off of that mirror. Pretty cool. Bending light. Light can bend when it passes in and out of see-through substances such as water and plastic. It's called refraction. Try saying that, refraction. Um, so try this. The way light bends can make a coin seem to move. You'll need a coin, a clear bowl, some water, and an adult to help you. So here's the coin, the bowl, and then you put the water in it looks like. So it's a fact. You see the coin because light bouncing off it travels to your eyes in a straight line. So here's what you would need to do. Put the coin in the bottom of the bowl. Sit facing the bowl so that you can see it from one side. Step two, keep very still and ask an adult to slowly fill the bowl with water. The coin seems to rise up, although it is still on the bottom. So water often looks shallower when you stand in a swimming pool. Your legs look shorter too. This happens because of refraction, that new word. And it's just, remember, it's um, the light that bended, bends when it passes in and out of a see-through substance. So if you stand a pencil in a glass of water, refraction makes it look like it's a broken pencil. That's something that you can try out as well. Night on Earth. So there are a lot of different um, things that you can test out inside of this book. Um, we, if you want to pause and like go through and try some of this stuff out and then come back, that's always fun too. Um, night on Earth. Why does it get dark at night? Our planet, the Earth, is spinning. And as it spins, the area that we live in slowly faces toward the sun, then turns away again. Try this. You can see how this works using a flashlight, a ball, and a sticker. So if you want to do this, you need those three things, flashlight, ball, and a sticker. Place the sticker on the ball and stand, I'm sorry, for the ball to stand for the area where you live. So like pretend like the ball is the earth, put the um, sticker on that ball and say, here's where Florida is. 
Um, step two, make the room dark and shine the flashlight at the ball. Now spin the ball around. Step three, as the ball spins, the sticker moves into the light, then the dark. The earth does the same thing. And we're in, when we're in the light, it's daytime. And when we face away from the sun, it's night. It's a fact. Light cannot curve around the earth. So the part facing away from the sun is the shadow. The sun does not switch off. It is always daytime somewhere in the world. And that's really important to note. Um, look at this um, model of the earth. So over here in Africa, the sun is shining. That means that it's daytime. But over here on the other side, here's where Florida is, I can see. Um, it's nighttime over there. See how it's got the shadow? That means that it's night. And over here, you can see the label on this side say day. And on this side, it says night. Here's just a diagram of what you do in order to um, have that experiment to happen. Shadow clock. Throughout the day, the sun seems to move across the sky. This makes shadows move too. Try this. Make a shadow clock to tell the time. You will need a pencil, a straw, modeling clay, a paper plate, and a clock or a watch. So those are five things that you need if you wanted to do this. Um, step one, use modeling clay to stick the straw into, I'm sorry, onto the middle of the plate. So here's where that is if you wanted to have that. I see that the plate's down here. We've got a ball of, of the modeling clay and the straw is sticking straight into the center. Um, put the plate in a sunny place such as a windowsill where the sun shines for most of the day. Don't put it in a dark closet. Put it in a sunny place. Every hour, mark where the straw's shadow falls and label it with the time. So that's why you're going to need the, the clock or the watch so that you can tell what time it is, you're going to be marking where the shadow falls and labeling it with the time. So each time you're going to just put a little mark, a little mark, a little mark. So here's where it's got 12 p.m., 1 p.m. You can see that's where the shadow was marked at that time. Keep the clock in the same position. Now you can use your clock to tell the time. So you're not going to be moving this plate all over the whole entire house or all over the whole backyard, wherever your sunny spot is. You're going to be making this, it's a sundial, it's a shadow clock, um, and you'll be able to, to look at that clock and see where the shadow is, and you'll be able to tell time after you've done this at least, I guess, 12 times so that you have each hour on there. And this is only going to work for daytime hours. You won't be able to do this at night. You need the sun to be popping in for this. Um, so a sundial is a kind of shadow clock, usually made of stone and metal, People used sundials to tell the time before there were ticking clocks. Here's another cool project that you could do. The colors of light. Light from lamps and from the sun looks white. It is actually made of many colors mixed together. Try this. You can see the colors of light if you shine light through a triangle shaped piece of glass or plastic called a prism. You will need a flashlight, a piece of white paper, and you will need a prism in order to do this. Um, step one, shine the flashlight through the prism. Step two, hold the paper on the other side of the prism. Can you see all the colors? It's a fact. As the light passes in and out, I'm sorry, into and out of the prism, it bends or refracts. Remember we talked about that a little bit ago as the refraction um, of bending this light, I'm sorry, the bending light is called refraction. The bending of the water um, makes it look like it's broken. Remember, light can bend when it goes in there too. Um, so as light passes into and out of the prism, it bends or refracts. This makes the light split into many colors. A rainbow forms when raindrops act like tiny prisms. They split up white sunlight into all its colors. That's pretty cool. I've seen a double rainbow recently. That was fun too. Um, here we are. We're at the end. We've got the glossary. Here are a lot of different words that were talked about. Um, refraction was talked about a whole lot during this. Remember that's the way that the light bends when it passes from one see-through substance into another. 
here we have the index. Now let's say you wanted to look back. Hey, what was that um, sundial? Where was that again? It was on page 19. If I flip back, oh look, there's the sundial. I really liked looking at that. So remember with the index, you can just look and say, oh, look. Um, oh, that shadow clock. Oh, that was on page 18 and 19. Glowing animals, what was that? I'm really interested to find more about that. Remember, you can look back and flip to these pages. It's going to tell you where to find it. Um, and that's the index. So the index helps you remember or helps you to locate certain information in a nonfiction text. Dun, dun, dun. So pretty cool stuff in here. Um, you can look through and figure out um, lots of different experiments to do with light and dark. And I hope you enjoyed this book.